in the source for God, and then you have God. The for is the initiative. Then you have God. God is the author of salvation. Amen? Amen. He is. He's the author of salvation. He's the source of salvation. It was His plan. It was God's plan, God's purpose. He is the God of salvation. Amen? You see that language often in the Old Testament. The Jews loved that say that they believed in God of their salvation. The God of salvation this morning loves you. Notice Psalm 37. <coughs> Turn me to Psalm 37. My wife's favorite psalm. Psalm 37. I want you to notice 39, verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. From the Lord. Look at Psalm 62 in verse 2. Psalm 62 in verse number 2. Verse 1 says, Truly my soul uh, silently waits for God. For Him comes my what? Salvation. He only is my what? Rock, my salvation, he is my defense. I shall not be greatly, what? Moved. Great verse. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 in your New Testament. Look at Titus chapter 2. Verse 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God. The God of my salvation. Yes, this morning, the source of our salvation was initiated by God. He had a purpose and a reason and a cause and He is the author of salvation. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Then notice number two. Notice the stimulus of our salvation. With the words, so loved. For God so loved. God has an intense feeling of deep affection for you this morning. Amen? A deep affection for you. God has and takes great pleasure in the salvation of mankind. Not only God takes pleasure in seeing people saved, but the Bible tells even the angels rejoice in heaven. You know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews that the angels look down and find this intriguing, this message, this gospel message, they find it intriguing. And the Bible tells us, if you take the, the tense of the words, the angels wish they could do the preaching. They would like to come down and preach this gospel just to see how man responds to it. They want to do it so badly. But see, God gave it man's responsibility to preach the gospel, not the angels. But what's interesting here, God so deeply loves you this morning and has made the first move with compassion. With compassion and mercy this morning. Praise the Lord this morning that His love for us moved Him to action. God so loved. That's action, people. Amen? See, love is no good. It has no action, right? You can tell a person, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, all you want, but if he doesn't uh, act it out, then it's a false love. It's just a word of saying. That's all it is. When God said, for God so loved, he so loved mankind that it moved him to compassion. It moved him so deeply in his heart that he had to do something. And he did. He loved us. You know, there's no greater love than the love of God. Amen? Amen. Who else could love us the way we are? <laughs> Right? You know, human beings, they have to work at it, at loving each other. And sometimes it doesn't go so well. All right? But God, God has such love and such mercy that He actually made the first move and loved us the way we were. That's why it says here in his love, not that we love God, but that God first, what? Loved us and gave his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Man, he, what a great lover he is. Amen. One thing about the love of God, he'll accept you where you're at. Where human beings put conditions. 
Now God, God loves you in the state you're in right now. If you're lost this morning, He loves you in that condition. If you're saved this morning, He loves you in your condition. Oh, what a great lover He is. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31.3, turn over there a minute. Look at Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. The scripture says, <coughs> The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have what? Drawn you. Love that verse. Romans 5 eight. But God commend his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's love. So loved us. So loved us. Look at John 16. In John chapter 16. And I want you to notice verse 27. John chapter 16 and verse number 27. The scripture says, For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and I have believed that I came forth from God. Even in Jesus' message, he says, The Father himself loves you. If you don't think that anybody loves you today, I, I can promise you this, God does. God loves everybody. The source of salvation, God. The stimulus, what moved him, was that intense feeling of deep affection for you and me. He so loved us. Thirdly, notice the subject of salvation. For God so loved the world. There's the subject of salvation. Now, the, the Greek word world here does not mean the trees, the sun, the moon, the grass, the animals. <laughs> okay? He's talking about human beings here. For God so loved the world. Human beings. World here in Greek means beings, okay? It also carries the idea of the cosmos too, what he created. God's love this morning is universal. God loves everybody in the world. It's universal. God's desire is that all will be saved, amen? He wants all to be saved. Every human being born in this world, God loves. He loves them deeply. He so deeply wants people to be saved this morning. But notice something. Look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Notice verse 16. The scripture says, Another sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So God loves Gentiles and Jews, the whole world. And he wants to draw those people to his son, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Turn over there a minute. 1 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and I want you uh, to notice verse 4, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the what? truth I'm, I'm glad that we, we that we can know a God that desperately loves us so loved us that it moved him to come up with the perfect plan for a person to be saved and it tells us here in our text that we are the subject of salvation human beings God wants to see everybody saved amen that's so important. Because sometimes we get so caught up into our world and its system, uh, sometimes we don't have that compassion to give out the gospel, to share somebody about Jesus, amen? But God did. God did. The one thing I love about the ministry of Jesus Christ is when you, when you watch Jesus doing his ministry, he always found time for people. There were no busier man on planet earth at that time than Jesus Christ. 
He had a set schedule. He had a set calling. And he always, even in his lowest days, even in his most tiredest days,